one of the biggest things I talk about on this channel is to invest and continuously build your wealth and let the interest just compound over and over and over again. But a lot of people don't know where to start. And one place where I recommend not starting is in individual stocks. What I mainly talk about is start off investing in an index fund or an ETF. And those are based off of indexes. But one thing I haven't gone over too much on this channel is what are the market indexes? So in today's video, we're gonna break down the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, as well as the Dow Jones Industrial Average. And if you don't know what those are, don't worry about it. By the end of this video, you will know what they are and you will know exactly how to invest in them. But I'm gonna warn you, this isn't gonna be one of my typical videos. This is gonna be one of those visual learning types of videos where you're mainly looking at visualization to understand what these concepts even mean. Because if I just explain it to you like, like this right here, because for one, you're probably gonna get bored and we can't be having you get about bored around here, clicking off the video and doing something else. This right here is your opportunity to learn how to get wealthy. I'm gonna show you how to do it. But two, it just won't click quite as well as if I showed you the actual picture. So I drew up some pictures for you and hopefully you like them. Y'all seem to like this in the last video, so I'm doing it the same exact way in this video. I did this in my S&P 500 video that's a standalone video specifically about the S&P 500. If you haven't watched that video, give it a watch after this. But anyway, we're going to jump straight into my notepad and we're going to see exactly what I'm talking about. So real quick, market indexes basically measure the performance of different aspects within the stock market. And they're used as benchmarks. And there's different types of indexes, but for the sake of this video, we're gonna talk about some broad-based indexes and we're gonna jump into the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So to get started, oops, shameless plug. Go ahead and read this book if you wanna get more wealthy by yours truly. So check this out. I figured, you know, what better visual representation than food? And I like pie. So today we're going to look at the S&P 500 as a pie. And we actually have three pies that you're going to, we're going to go through today. But for this one right here, we'll say this is an apple pie. You know what I'm saying? Nice and delicious. This is the S&P 500. I did make an entire video dedicated to purely the S&P 500 where I specifically go over every aspect of it, how to invest in it and things. But we're gonna go over it briefly in this video. And after this, if you want more clarification on it and you wanna invest in the S&P 500, go ahead and click on the link to that video. It's gonna be in the description and it's also gonna be up here somewhere in the video. So the S&P 500, it stands for Standard & Poor's 500 Index. It's large cap companies only and it's comprised of 500, as the name suggests, it's comprised of 500 big companies, large cap companies. And we're looking at companies like Apple, Google, Visa, MasterCard, every company you see up here, Amazon, CVS, Verizon, John Deere, Walmart, Chevron, Public Storage, Sherwin-Williams, companies of that caliber, Duke Energy. And so this takes a big pie and it splits between 500 and something companies. It's like 504 companies total, but it splits them out between all 11 sectors. For those of you who don't know, there are 11 stock sectors total. And so this is mostly technology at 29.5%, and then it's 13.1% financials. So these types of companies, Visa, MasterCard, Healthcare, is 12.8%, consumer discretionary is 10.3%, communication services like Verizon, that's 8.9%, industrial is 8.6%, so think of things like John Deere, consumer staple 6.1%, think about Walmart, Dollar General, and things of that nature, energy is 3.8%, think of Chevron, real estate is 2.4%, think of public storage, and then companies like Sherwin-Williams, that's 2.3%, and then companies like Duke Energy, that's utilities, like your actual utilities that you pay, that's 2.2%. So it takes the companies and splits them up, and it weighs these sectors, but these are cap-weighed, as we can see right here. And cap-weighed just means that if a company such as Apple has a bigger market cap than, say, a company like Visa, Apple is going to be weighed more. That's all that means. So it means that this fund, so it means that the S&P 500 is mostly going to have 
Apple weighed within it. So if you buy a fund like VOO, which is an ETF, or VFIAX, which is an index fund for Vanguard, it's S&P 500, if you were to pull up the allocation breakdown, you would see that Apple is weighed more than Google, Visa, MasterCard, and all of these because Apple has a bigger market cap than all of these. But then if you were to look at the same exact breakdown, you would see a company like Microsoft is more is weighed more than Apple. And that's because Microsoft now has a bigger market cap than Apple does. And it goes like this for every sector. And, that, and that's that's why technology is weighed more than all of these. It has a bigger market cap than all of these. And the reason an investment like this is so valuable is because, for one, they're using top-of-the-line companies. They're using large-cap companies only. But there's 500 of them, and they get exposure to every single sector. This is very popular. It is it has decent growth year over year. We're talking in the double digits. And this is standing the test of time through recession, depression. This thing has succeeded through. And that's not to say that it's never had a negative year, but it always bounces back and it has lower volatility, which means less of this than its peers. So hopefully you've gotten a better idea of the S&P 500. If you do want more in-depth information about the S&P 500, check out my video. It's called How to Invest in the S&P 500. I will make sure to link that in the video. But hopefully you have gone from about confused when it comes to the S&P 500 to knowing what the S&P 500 is and getting ready to make some money from it. So we've got another pie coming your way. Um, we'll say this is like a a pecan pie or something like that. I say pecan even though everybody else says pecan, but that's besides the point. So NASDAQ is a little more complicated when you actually break it down, at least in my opinion. When I was first learning, it was a little more complicated because if you were to just Google search NASDAQ, you would see the NASDAQ composite and you would see the NASDAQ 100 and you may not know that there's a difference and there is in fact a difference and it's going to depend on your investing preference. So first of all, we need to discover what's a NASDAQ. That's what I was wondering. What is a NASDAQ? All it is is an electronic marketplace where you can buy and sell securities such as stocks in this case because these indexes that we're looking at are all stock based. But anyway, what NASDAQ stands for, you will probably never in your life need to know this, but I just felt that some, some of you may want to know. It stands for National Association of Securities Dealers Automated Quotations. And you will absolutely never need that information again in your life, but that's what this stands for. And when we're talking about NASDAQ indexes, we're talking about companies that are listed on the NASDAQ stock exchange. And this is based in New York. So... The similarities between these two, this is the NASDAQ 100 and this is the NASDAQ composite. The similarities between these two is that they're both cap weighted just like the S&P 500. And now that you understand what cap weighted means, it means that the bigger the market cap, the more weight a specific company is going to get within the portfolio. But, but if we start with the NASDAQ composite, just because, you know, this is kind of the 100 is derived from this. The NASDAQ composite consists of 2,500 plus companies. In fact, this fund right here that tracks the NASDAQ, because remember, these are indexes we're talking about. You cannot invest in an index. You can only invest in something that tracks the index, like an index fund or an ETF. Well, this FNCMX, that's actually hard to say than it sounds, FNCMX is Fidelity's index fund for the NASDAQ composite. They have 3,119 companies in there. So yes, 2,500 plus companies is legit. But this is a tech heavy index. As you remember, uh, the S&P 500 is like 20 something percent tech. This is 48.4 percent tech as of 2024. And just like the last pie we saw, it split up like this. The reason I didn't give slices to this one is because these are allocated differently. And if you notice, this has all 11 sectors. 
This one has 10 and excludes financials for some reason. And this is a little more concentrated. This has just 100 companies. This one has, like we said, 2,500 plus. But the difference between something like these two and the S&P 500 is one, the growth is a lot more aggressive because again, very, very, very tech heavy. And the as you could imagine, it's more volatile. So that means it's gonna be a lot more of this. And that's okay, especially if you're a younger investor, that's fine. But you need to understand that before you get into it and your stomach drops when you go from here to boom. Because, you know, if you have faith in it and you understand how the NASDAQ works, it's going to bounce right back and go through the roof. But anyway, these two also have another difference between it and the S&P 500. And that's simply that these have domestic stocks within them, which by domestic, I mean from the U.S. And they also have foreign companies in them. That's the difference. The S&P 500 only deals with America. This deals with Mostly domestic stocks, but also has foreign stocks in it as well. But anyway, if you're wondering how to invest in the NASDAQ, if you want to invest in something like the NASDAQ 100, QQQ, that is an ETF. And if you want to invest in the NASDAQ composite, FNCMX is Fidelity's index fund for the NASDAQ. So those are two ways that you can get access to them. I highly recommend you do your own research and look at the expense ratios for both of them and look at how they both perform and just see where you would prefer your money to go if you were into something like NASDAQ. And also keep in mind that this is a bit more volatile than something like the S&P 500, but it has outperformed the S&P 500. So again, just do your research. And last but not least, we have yet another pie, except this is a savory one. This is pizza. Everybody loves pizza. But the reason I made this as a pizza is because it's a little smaller than the other ones. Here's the thing. Think of this as like one of those individual personal pizzas, the little mini pizzas, right? This is smaller than the other ones. Dow Jones. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average, also known as the Dow 30. This right here measures the price movements of 30 large American companies listed on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange. So that's why we went through the NASDAQ first, because now that you know what a NASDAQ even is, you know that it's an electronic platform to buy and sell securities such as stocks. Now you know what the heck that is. But anyway, it has stocks that are on the NASDAQ and the New York Stock Exchange, but it has specificity. It still says American company. So this this one is only dealing with America as well. So the ingredients to this pizza are going to be things like 21.9% fi financials. So this is actually one that doesn't have the heaviest sector being tech. It's actually financials. And this is also price weighted. So what price weighted means is if we're talking about stocks, whichever stock is more expensive, this one does not have anything to do with the market cap per se. This is purely about the price of the stock. So if we were to compare something like Visa to Coca-Cola, Visa is more expensive than the Coca-Cola stock. So it's weighed more within this index. We're gonna keep going. And then tech is 19.79%, healthcare is 17.47%, consumer discretionary is 15.92%, industrials is 14.16%, consumer staples is 4.74%, communications is 2.53%, energy is 2.52%, materials is 0.96%. And if you haven't realized yet, this is missing two sectors. It's missing real estate and utilities, just so you know. Just because it's a broad-based fund and it's blended pretty well with all these other ones does not mean that it's going to have every single sector in it. But anyway, I drew in some companies so you could put a face to a name with the companies. Uh, but also, these companies actually exist within the Dow 30. I was very intentional about putting actual companies that are inside of this index because... If I just put random companies, it wouldn't be reflective of what actually exists within its pizza, so to speak. So for financials, we have comp 
we have Visa and American Express. These both exist within it. There's 30 companies total, so there's more than just these two. But this right here represents about a third of what's actually in the fund. So tech, Microsoft, and Intel. And these, are, if, if you haven't caught on, these are blue chip companies. What blue chip companies are, highly reputable companies that have been around forever. They are doing well financially. They're, well, they're world renowned. You, you've, you know about Microsoft. You, if you haven't seen or heard Intel signs up, you've probably used a computer that is going off of an Intel processor. You've been to Walgreens or at least drove past one. Um, McDonald's and Nike, I mean, you can't go anywhere without seeing them. Boeing, if you've ever been on a plane, it was probably a Boeing plane. Coca-Cola, even if you don't drink Coke, they make other things like water, Sprite. And this company just owns a lot of other companies and things. Verizon, that's the network I'm literally using right now with my phone. Chevron, you got to have gas, you know what I'm saying? And then the Dow as well. And that's literally what this fund is called. So what I'm saying is they're not just using any companies. It's a highly concentrated fund and it is pretty well diversified but it only consists of 30 companies, so it doesn't give you quite as much security as something like, say, 500 companies might have. But this could also be a solid choice. You just have to put the three side by side and decide for yourself which one makes the most financial sense for you and your family and your future. And an example of what an ETF would look like is the DIA. And you can look this up yourself. And that's an ETF that you could invest in and you would invest in it the same exact way. I show you how to invest into the S&P 500. If you go watch that video, I give you step by step instructions. You type in DIA just like you would type in something like VOO and you hit buy just the same exact process. And that is how you would invest in it. But basically, if I were to break down the differences, I would say this. I would say it's based off of what risk you can stomach. And I would also say it's very similar to food. Some people like savory. Some people like sweet. Some people like pizza. Some people like pie. Some people like all of it. But you've got to decide where you want your money to go. And for me, when I was thinking of it, I know that I'm young. I'm 28 years old. I know that I can stomach a certain risk tolerance. But I also like to invest in individual stocks because now I understand what I'm doing when I do so. So when it comes to ETFs and index funds, I want to have something that is very decent when it comes to yearly returns that is still better than what the average person is going to have returned on their investment, but not at such of an extent that it's just blowing everything out of the water. And then when things are bad, it's really bad. And when things are good, it's really good. I like to have something that kind of hits a few bumps in the road, but like it's not detrimental and I'm not worried about it. There, there's a net of safety that I would like to have when it comes to investing. I'm taking enough risk as it is with the stocks that I'm invested in. But for you, you're going to have to look at what makes the most sense for you. You know, do you want something that's cap weighted or price weighted? For me, I personally would prefer to have cap weighted. Do you want 500 companies or 30 companies or 100 companies or 2,500 companies? Like it's, it's all up to you. They all have their own pros and their own cons. They all have a different makeup of which companies represent which sector. Some are more limited. Some have more of a variety. Some of them have foreign stocks and domestic stocks, and some just have domestic stocks. It's really going to depend on what you have a taste for when it comes to investing and risk tolerance and things like that. So I hope you appreciate my artistry and, and showing you the analogies because I think food is one of the best ways you can actually grasp a concept and put a face to a name in terms of what they are because you hear this terminology and it's kind of intimidating like when you first start investing it's kind of intimidating when you hear all these phrases and all these names and all these acronyms you don't know what the heck they mean or what they stand for what the difference is between them these are all broad based we, we haven't even scratched the surface of all the different types of indexes but for the sake of this and the sake of you being a beginner investor, these are three that I think that you should know about and consider investing in because these are going to be what you learn from. And if you notice, I put 
actual pictures of companies or at least try to draw their logos on the page it think about it if these are companies that are representing entire sectors that are within these indexes if you actually do want to start investing in individual stocks a great way to start would be to look at what their top 10 holdings are in each of the indexes and i'll give you a hint they're not all the same but they all kind of rhyme like they have the same kind of pattern if that makes sense You'll see a lot with Apple and Microsoft. You'll see a lot of Visa. You'll see a lot of Costco. You'll see a lot of Walmart. Like they don't all have the same exact composition, but if you break them all down, you'll start seeing some of the same companies over and over and over again in the top five, in the top 10. And that right there is going to show you a lot of, wow, if the best indexes, like if the indexes that we're tracking the entire performance of the stock market or a section of the stock market is saying Apple, Microsoft, Google, Walmart, Costco, you know what I'm saying, Verizon. It's going to give you ideas in terms of what you should be looking at when it comes to individual stocks, when you become ready for investing in individual stocks. And my course can help you out with that. And if you don't want that, just keep, keep watching the videos. I'm giving you the information for free. The only difference between that and my investing course is we jump super deep into every single concept. So there's no question, there's no guessing, there's no nothing. And of course, I share even more knowledge than I share in these videos. But this information right here, it can get you started and you can make some good money. Right now, my investments are up. I mean, way up. My Weeble account, as I'm looking at my account right now, it's 8.17 p.m. on Thursday, March 14th. And I'm going to take a screenshot as I speak, okay? I am up 90.44%, and I only have five holdings in my Roth IRA. I'm up 40-something percent. And I go over this more in my Wealth Journey series, but what I'm saying is you can get started with this information and you can learn more and more and build your skills on top of each other. And you can change the whole trajectory of your future just by simply learning how to invest. Because these companies are going to continue to thrive. And the good things about these ETFs and index funds and, and indexes that I'm showing you is that I always, the way I teach it in my course is they, they learn from their mistakes, right? They're not like stocks where if you... If you buy Apple and then Apple just plummets and let's say they somehow go out of business, it's not like that. Like with these ETFs and index funds, they're like, okay, we have 500 companies in the whole fund. So if Apple's not cutting it, Apple gets booted out or moved to the bottom or something, but we're not going to keep putting 20% of our weight in the Apple if it's not doing right. It's the same way companies do it when certain employees aren't cutting it. They either get demoted or booted out. I mean, I hate to put it that way, but it's going to make it real life to you. It's going to make it make more sense to you. If you don't like certain food, you might have to boot it out of your diet and replace it with something else, probably something that's healthier. And, and that's because you're learning from your mistakes. So the, the, the funds and the indexes, they have to do what keeps them healthy. They have to keep going up in price. And if they start going down in price because of one or two or five companies, they got to do something with them companies. And once they do, they start to heal and they start to boom, skyrocket again. And they're going to keep up having those expectations for those companies to perform. And if not, oh, well, boom, boot it out. So that's what gives you extra security and that's what causes the volatility to get a little less when it comes to these funds. Anyway, I got way too passionate about that food analogy. But anyway, that is the video for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, check out my S&P 500 video. It's going to help you tremendously with understanding the S&P 500. And it's also going to show you how to invest in these funds. Hopefully you wrote down all the examples I have had of ETFs and index funds of these other of these other indexes because the S&P 500 isn't the only index that exists. It just happens to be my favorite one to invest in, but you don't have to have the same favorite as me. That's why I'm giving you variety and I'm showing you the breakdown of all three of them. And hopefully it made sense to you and hopefully the pictures resonated with you.